Hi, I'm Jimmy Chang. I'm a math expert from St. Petersburg, Florida, and I'm here to talk about how to simplify exponents. What you need for this exercise are a pen or pencil, piece of paper, and a calculator. And we're going to talk about a few properties of exponents that will help you simplify those exponent-related problems. So here we go. Now, one of the most important rules to think about when it comes to simplifying exponents is this particular property here, where if you have a base raised to a power times the same base raised to another power, you will add those exponents together. Now, one thing to keep in mind, of course, is that the bases have to match. If they don't match, then you can't use this property. The bases have to be equal. So if you have something like, for example, 7 to the third times 7 to the fourth, what you can do is add the 3 and the 4 together. So 7 to the third times 7 to the fourth would be 7 to the seventh power. And you can use a calculator on finding out what the actual value of that is. Now, another property is if you have b to an exponent divided by b of a different exponent, again, making sure the bases match, because if they don't, we cannot use this property, you will have b to the m minus n. You can subtract those exponents. So if multiplication is associated with addition of exponents, then division will be associated with subtraction. So hypothetically, if you have 10 to the fourth over 10 to the third, you would subtract the 4 and the 3, and you'll get 10 to the 1, which, as you know, is 10. Now, another fundamental property would be if you have a base raised to a power, but in turn is raised to another power, you would actually multiply those exponents together. So, for example, if you have x to the 7th raised to the 3rd, you would actually multiply 7 times 3, which gives you 21. Now, a couple of other rules I want to go along with you here is the zero exponent rule and that any base raised to zero power is going to give you 1. Now, the only condition for that is that the base itself cannot be zero because that's indeterminate. Now, that means if you have something like 5xyz, all that to the zero power, if this is your base raised to zero power, that's going to be 1. If you have 100 to the zero power, that's also going to give you 1. So whatever the base happens to be, as long as it's not zero, that's going to give you 1. And lastly, you're going to have what's known as the negative exponent rule, as in if you have something raised to a negative power, you move it to the bottom of a newly created fraction, so it'll be 1 over b to the n power. So for example, if you have 5 to the negative 3, you can rewrite it as 1 over 5 to the positive 3. And that will always help you when it comes to writing your final answer in positive exponent form. Now, there's many other properties of exponents out there, but there are a few of the major ones to help get you started. And I'm Jimmy Chang, and that's how you simplify exponents.